you know what I'm saying? Uh, next weekend, we're starting off with a fight that should have happened. And, you know, now we're finally getting it. And that's one Josh Taylor, you know, um, still has, he's still, you know, waiting to make his first title defense since becoming undisputed at 140. Um, great, in his great fight. Everybody loved that fight with Jose Ramirez. And this is his first. His first defense of his undis- of his undisputed titles against the uh, WBO mandatory uh, challenger Jack Catterall. Now Catterall was supposed to, was 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 his mandatory, and Catterall stepped aside so that we could get the undisputed uh, at one forty. So you know what I'm saying? Give him props for that. And so he's like, you know what? I so when people said, oh, you know, he's going to enforce his mandatory, and he's going to fight Catterall. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Let's 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 have that fight because it's the least we can do for getting 140 undisputed. And it was supposed to happen in December, and then a whole bunch of shit happened. Leave what um, cap, didn't uh, Taylor catch COVID and then had an injury and it was just yeah. like so like it's to the point where then the fight had to get pushed back, and now it gets pushed back till February. And it's like okay, we wanted this nobody like we wanted this over in December so that we could start the new year fresh. Now it's just pushed back to February. Now it's finally here, and it's like, oh, I for- I almost forgot about this. <laughs> so, you know, we just want to see this fight because it's like it's almost like Taylor's kind of looking past Catterall because it's like you know there's a lot of what he's gonna do. He's gonna move up, yada yada. So, you know, what I'm saying, what do you, what do you guys think about this? I'll be- <laughs> I guess this is just to say, I guess this is the homecoming fight where Josh can say he defended the undisputed because he's not really undisputed unless you defend it. True. Very true. So, yeah. I mean, even you and Jermaine Taylor had defended against Hopkins in the rematch, so. Yep. Okay. Uh, I, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind the fight at all, but it's just, you know you want a big fight after this. What about you, Pilot? Yeah, uh, basically what what LB said. I mean, he, he wants to defend his titles at home, and he's getting his chance to. Um, but after that, obviously, I think his next moves he's setting his sights to go to 147. And um, you know, I'm a greedy boxing fan, and with all the 140 pound sharks, I want to see the belts drop so you know the guys can get their chance at uh, and some you know hardware. But uh, I oh. think he's gonna go. Ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, just, I mean, I think, you know, Taylor will, will win this fight, probably just knock him out more than likely. Stop. I mean, the guy's undefeated, 13 knockouts, it's a 26 to 0, but I don't think he poses a threat, really, to Josh Okay. Taylor. You think he knocks him out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said he'll knock him out. Let's just say round eight. Fuck it. Round eight. Okay. What about you, LB? Taylor knocked him out in the fourth round. Okay, okay. I also agree that Taylor knocks him out, and I think he knocks him out in five. So, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, it should be, you know, let's, let's hope it's just the fight. Let's get it over with. And because we got, you know, people want bigger and better things for, for Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor wants bigger and better things for Josh Taylor. So yeah. then, we can, then we can see, well, is he going to move up? Is he gonna um, stay at 140 to defend to, at some of the heavy hitters at 140? But I know he's having trouble making the weight, so he's probably gonna move up. And he's big, he, he's he, big for yeah, 140. He's very big. Like he could be at 154 type big. Like honestly, yeah, yeah. And he's got the height for it too. So yeah, I he wants the Crawford fight. He really does. So um, it'd be interesting if that happens. Yeah. But, about that. <laughs> <laughs> LB's like, yeah, shit ain't happening. <laughs> I mean, at 147, it's like, he, it's not too many options over on top rank for 147. This is true. Yeah, he's got nothing to prove at 140. I mean, his run at, through 140 is, is making him a top six, top five pound for pound fighter, so... You know, we want to see him at 147 with the you know in the glory division and seeing what he can do there at this point. Okay, that is just 
Um, this is true. So we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. But hopefully, he just gets through. You know, Jack Catterall, and then we can just speculate on that. You know, after. So we'll see. Word. But I think the 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 better you know fights this weekend for me, in my opinion, are it's going to be that Showtime triple header. So that's we got you no know, looking forward to us. And then you know, unfortunately, the sales got taken out from the main event. But we'll get into that. But you know, even the 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 opening bout um, that's kicking it off. You know, Jerwin Ancajas, uh, junior bantamweight champion. You know. Unfortunately, we you know we were supposed to get the Ioka unification, uh, and oh, but you know it is what it is. So now we he's he's um defending his title against uh, the Argentinian Fernando Martinez. So you know what I'm saying should be a good fight to kick it off with. So you know what I'm saying Ancas is a good fighter. I enjoy watching him fight. So yeah, he's hopefully, in fact. hopefully that's a good fight. And the second fight is actually the one that everybody is, I think everybody is really looking forward to. And that's one Mr. Gary Antoine Russell making his return. And he's stepping up. Everybody's wanted Gary Antoine Russell to step up. Want to see him against, you know, step up in competition. Well, this is the first step against former champion Victor Postal. 10 round light, 10 rounds. And this is like this is gonna be the first real name on his resume. So we're gonna see what Gary Antoine Russell is made of, and you know, against a guy that you know, I'm I'm gonna be honest, I've never been a Postal fan like that. Um, some people, pat pat pat, you know, are a little higher on Postal than I. Am. <laughs> Great value, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, um, I mean he's respect, he's a respectable fighter. He's not, you know, he's not no bum, but, you know, a jobber. Nah, but no, no. the thing is, he's like a, a normal, like you're like he's an above average fighter. He's like a solid B fighter. He's but, not a B, a, yeah. not a B minus. He's right there. And he hasn't no, fought since 2020. Yeah, exactly. And he hasn't fought since 2020, so it'll be interesting to see. I mean, because. My boy Gary Antoine Russell got 14 wins, 14 knockouts. So we'll see if that streak continues. He's gonna put hands on Postal, and I feel like he's gonna stop him. Nobody, because I mean, you know, he's fought Terrence Crawford, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez, and he hasn't got stopped. So that'll be a, a good feather on the cap. If, if well, I mean, stop him. unfortunately, and um, I hate that, um, you know, certain people, uh, Ramirez did not do the job that they were supposed to against a guy like Postal and made him look better to the point where it's like, oh, well, like you should have gotten rid of, like you should have done better and made it less, you know, controversial and now people just like hyping up Postal again. Well, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you know hell of a fighter, yeah, and he is, but he's like, like, I was, I was always side-eyeing because like, people from back in the day, well, you know, Danny Garcia is ducking Postal. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's like, like Danny Garcia got wins bigger than Postal. Exactly. And like, then the like, like Postal is like a Kendo Holt win to me. Like, yep. Like, and then once he beat uh, Matisse, then it was oh, like it was just. Then the hyping up really began. Oh well, mm-hmm. you know he he beat he beat uh, Matisse better than than Danny. I'm like, oh my gosh! Like the hyping up just to the point where some people still cons- would consider the, um, uh, Postal to be Crawford's best win. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding? Like, <laughs> like he shut him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfucker started making the Postal into like some Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's not even seeing Kessler. Like, let's be honest. He's more of like, he's like the 140 Linares now. <laughs> so. The one, um, he said the 140 Linares. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't no, know. What yeah, I mean, do, y- do y'all think, y'all think Russell's going to stop him? Well, uh, what do you think, Pilot? What's your prediction? Uh, I think Russell could see his knockout streak, 15 wins, 59. I think he'll, he'll, he'll stop him. I mean, 
it's not gonna be an easy task. Hustle's a good fighter, but I think I think I'll still go stop him. I'll probably uh, I'll be ambitious. Say round seven. Okay, wow. you LB. Remember, I had said eight. <laughs> eight, eight rounds. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also agree with Pilot. I think he'll get him out of there in seven rounds. Um, yeah. if Gary Russell's the if if Gary Antoine Russell's the goods, he should get rid of um. He should dominate this fight. Um, and like I think that Angry Fist is just a horrible style for Postal, um, just matchup wise. Like he's just he's gonna get all those hands. <laughs> like Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be it might be bad. <laughs> he's gonna get cause because that's the one thing about that's the one thing I, I like about um about Gary Antoine Russell. Like he throws every punch with like bad intentions. Like, yeah, he does. Yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, mean. He punches me. He's, he's fat. And he's for himself. He's pretty fast. He ain't like his brother, but he's, his hands are pretty quick. You know. Well, you know, you know the funny like, thing is, you say that pilot, but Gary Gary Russell Jr. like put up um put over um Antoine's hand speed and was like, oh my brother is almost like just as fast as me, which I mean I don't know if I believe that, but like. He's saying it like he's got fast hands too, so yeah, he's comfortable. You know, they're brothers, so yeah, it makes sense. So, yeah. So I think he'll get him out of there. I just think his, his aggressive work rate, like Postal is gonna be there to be hit, and I think he's just gonna get taken out. So, you know, what I'm saying, uh, hopefully he does because then you know we can because Antoine Russell has a hell of a future. So yeah, I want very high on him. Very high on him. Moving forward. So and then like one of the hardest fights to have in boxing. What did you say? Now I'm just saying uh, he just seems like one of the hardest fights you could take in boxing. Yeah, I want to see him versus Matthias so bad. Him versus Subaru Matthias would be a, would be would be dope as fuck. There's so many fights I want to see him against. Regis, like, yeah, Regis, sort of. you got so many options for him, especially at 140. Okay. So yeah. we'll see what happens. But uh, the main event is uh, one Chris Primetime Colbert, not calling him little B Hop like somebody else. Uh, <laughs> graduated from that. He graduated from that nickname. Um, he was supposed to be. <laughs> he was supposed to be fighting against Roger Gutierrez for the WBA title. But unfortunately, Gutierrez tested positive for COVID, so that's not happening anymore. So now, you know, Colbert had to find a new opponent, and so now he's going to be facing uh, Hector Luis Garcia, who's unbeaten, 14-0, 10 knockouts. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm not sure is this going to be for no, it's not. It's, it's not going to be for the title, right? Because oh no, because yeah, because uh, yeah, because. Doya Gutierrez is tested positive, so it's not going to be for the title. But you know, hopefully, if Colbert gets through uh, um, Garcia, then we'll get the title, the title shot next. So what do you guys think about the main event? Mm, it's side, I guess. You know, I, I wanted to see Gutierrez a lot because I was watching their fight hype press conference, and it was you know pretty. You know, it got kind of got me interested, so it kind of sucks that because he's actually the, the the actual champion, I think WBA champion for one thirty. So. Yeah, I I had gotten confused because I was like, well, wait, was he the because cha- it got confusing with the WBA because didn't Tank hold that belt too at one thirty? So it was like, yeah, yeah top in. So like I was like, was it vacant? Was I, I had forgotten if Gutierrez was upgraded? It was just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was the champion. One. So, you know, saying hopefully we'll get through that and then we'll get to see Colbert, you know, fight for the title because I'm still, I still, you know, pretty high on Colbert. I think, you know, he's, he's a very good fighter and still has a lot to give. So we want to see him get the, you know, fight for the title so we can see some good fights, you know, and he'll get catapulted into 130. Because 130 is always a division that I've been complaining about for the longest about how we don't fight, we don't get the fights that we want at 130. It's like these guys never unify. It's always an issue, and it's just like now it's finally the ball is rolling because you know we got Valdez and Stevenson coming. Yeah, up. I was shocked that I was shocked it's official. <laughs> yeah, so it's a step in the right. It's a, it's a very good step in the right direction, but 
You know what I'm saying? We want Colbert into the into the uh, uh, you know into the scene because we want 130 to be popping because they got some fighting. So we'll see how it goes. So you know, hopefully, hopefully that's a good week uh, weekend of boxing. Um, I just you know because this week left the stench on us, unfortunately. So yeah, but you know. Um, so let's get into some polls. We got some polls for you, you know. Ring game. Okay, got no, hold on. No one, no one had any predictions for the Colbert main event, right? We we all uh, think uh, Colbert's gonna win. Yeah, we all think Colbert's gonna gonna probably, uh, probably, 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 probably decision, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah decision. Yeah. So with that, I think it's time to get into some polls because you know Ring Gang got the best polls. Um, and you know, we got an interesting poll, uh, we want to talk about. Um, unfortunately, you know, the zone and more importantly, Eddie Hearn, you know, a lot of people are getting frustrated because you know, he's fumbling the bag when it comes to uh, certain fighters. We want to see these guys in big fights, you know what I'm saying? Certain, certain fighters of a certain shade, and yes, a certain hue. Like, and I listen when it started for me, for me personally, it started when Tevin Farmer, you know, got the deal. And I'm like, okay, they're keeping him active, he's getting money. But yeah, he was a workhorse. Yeah, Tevin I Farmer started a noticing a never ending cycle of, okay, they're keeping him active. Okay, I like that. Well, when's the next step? When's we, when he's going to get big, a big fight? And it just kept like that was my first um like just inch inch like inkling of something's wrong then we get the andre fight then we get the andre deal and he's there and it's the same thing active he's active he's getting he's getting money uh you know good money but it's like man these big fights he's got a belt you know he's got a belt he's got you know he's getting a payday but why are we not getting these fights? So it was like, okay, that's and strike. They're getting paid good for the defenses too, because from what I heard, you know, a farmer was getting, I think, well, five hundred k. Sure, uh, Andre's like the payday before the payday to, to some of these guys he's fighting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, but like, I know he's getting paid good money. You know, to fight some of these guys. So, the Liam Williams of the world. And, so, I, um, I just, you know, that was strike two. And now, for me, strike three, and I'm taking this personally, is one Devin Haney. A young, talented fighter that people are very high on. And he had a buzz going back to the show box. And... Then he signed with Matchroom, and he's making money. You know, props him for that. But once again, he's active, but where are the fights we want to see? And this is a young fighter now with a belt, and it's like he's being frozen out. And now we have the perfect opportunity to get the big fight that we need, that we want to see for Undisputed with George Cambosis. And that's looking like it's going to fall through the cracks because Loma's about to sneak in and get it. Yeah. So, once again, what is going on with the zone and these black fighters not getting these <laughs> not getting these big fights? And they don't, they don't care about these black American fighters. I wonder what the fate of Ammo Williams in Montana loves going to be next. You know? Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, I don't know. But, you know, in this poll, Ring I got the best polls. And, you know, there's still three days left, so please, com- you know, comment, you know, uh, vote. Um, it's, who do you think Eddie Hearn will be able to secure a big fight for first? Will it be Demetrius Andre, or will it be Devin Haney? Um, Andre Haney or neither. And 62 votes so far, and 52% said neither. <laughs> Damn. Uh, 34% said Haney and 15% said Andre. So, the people have spoken. <laughs> they don't have faith in either of them. Damn. That's a problem, Eddie. This is a big problem. 
I voted Haney, but it, I no. So I I think I I, don't know, I think did I vote for Haney or I think I might have voted neither. It was like I just don't have any faith in him doing it. All we're getting is just talk. This is from a snake oil salesman. I voted for Haney because I feel like if Haney moves up, you know, there's some fights out there I believe that are gettable. At 140 for. Uh, you know, Henny fight love. You know, he fight um. Yeah, some other people at one forty he could fight. And, so, you no. Know, see, that could be a good look. Whereas Andre, like man, this nigga got to He already beat so many contenders at one sixty. Then he got to go to one sixty eight, fight some contenders. See if Canelo will not avoid him for the umpteenth time. You know what I mean? It's like, there's so much shit you gotta do for Andre to get something where Haney, it seems difficult, but, you know, it seems like, it, it seems like possible, it seems like mission difficult instead of mission impossible. <laughs> Andre is mission impossible. Haney is like mission difficult. <laughs> Oh my gosh! What, what about you, pilot? What you think? Um, I I think uh, Haney should definitely move up. You know, if you you know he he just can't secure that big fight. I mean, he's getting decent fights, but I think um Haney should definitely not. You know, the 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 boxing gods are testing him if he continues to stay at one thirty five and just fighting. You know, like LB would say, lateral moves. You know what I mean? So I think uh, it'd be best for. Her. For uh, Haney to definitely, uh, if he can't get, but you know, because Ryan Garcia has been his man up for a little bit, right? Yeah, that ain't happening. We know that's that not happening. You know, I mean, he <laughs> should definitely, he should definitely be getting, like, you know, I like Cambosa's getting that win. You know, even, you know, I'm a female fan, but like, he's become a Twitter fingers, and he's going on the email jokes. I'm like, come on, like, at least give Haney a chance to invalidate those email jokes that he always gets. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's the whole situation is just it's sad. It's like these guys, these careers are getting wasted. Talented fighters that are just not going anywhere because their promoter can't secure it for them. Or at least I mean, like, like Andre is thirty four. At least he ain't got another decade in this game. You know what I mean? But I don't know. He, yeah, but who wants a, another decade of Andre type maneuvering? Yeah, we're not yeah, we're not yeah. waiting another decade for this for him with Haiti. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. He, he should. I think isn't he technically a free agent, or is he signed to Hearn? You know what well, I mean? Like no, he's right technically now? a he's technically a, a free agent, but like match yeah. but match room is just working with him to you know yeah, still get like what they do for Canelo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he should definitely try to see what else is out there because I know Hearn can't secure his big fights for all these American fighters. Yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. But I um I feel like. Of the two of them, I think that I mean um, Haney has a chance to has a better chance of securing a big fight simply because if he moves up to 140, now there's it's deep. Like he's gonna he's they can't just avoid him. Like he's yeah. he'll make he'll make his way into it. But and he's yeah. love is on the same platform. He, he he wins over love. He could get one of those belts that's gonna splinter from uh, Taylor once Taylor moves up. Absolutely. So there's more. There's um, there's more potential options for Devin Haney, whereas Andre, it's like, you know, I I've, I'm hearing um, talk talk about because uh, they asked um, Benavidez about Andre. It's like if you moved up to 168, and he entertained it, but who knows if that will actually come to any fruition if Andre moves up? But that would be a hell of a fight. But right. then weren't they saying something about his whole uh, his manager wanted more money to fight Andre than he would seven want million, to. yeah, yeah seven, seven million. million. I think it's true. He was trolling with that bullshit. Seven million. Um, I mean, his manager said that. I think Benavidez was open to it, more open to it than because they asked Benavidez, and he definitely said he was open to fighting Andre. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, uh, a lot of <laughs> and that you know. You know, say it with your chest and mean that shit. Absolutely. All, all the guys who mean it are the Liam Williams of the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, it's 
because and if Benavidez doesn't get him, if he moves up to 168 and Benavidez doesn't fight him, it's like what I'm like. We we all know Canelo is not going to fight him because Canelo has made it clear as day, I'm not fighting. You are a horrible fighter, and it's not worth fighting. Regardless of you know what, whether we like that or not, unfortunately, that's what Canelo is going to do, and he's not going to fight. So I'm not even going to waste my breath in entertaining that, unfortunately. But, so yeah, Canelo is going to want to be dominating uh, light heavyweight by that time. Yeah, so that's that's I'm not even gonna discuss that. And then it's like, okay, if Charlo moves up to 168, is it like, yeah, are we finally gonna get? Are we finally gonna get that? Like, or is um, Charlo just gonna keep holding on to petty grudges and saying, well, I'm not gonna fight you, yada yada. Just uh, it, well, there's no avenue for him because it's like all the same fighters that he could be fighting at 168 if he moves up there. They wouldn't fight him at 160, so what makes you think they're going to fight him at 168? Yup. So, it's just... It, I I just don't have faith, unfortunately, in Andre getting a big fight secured. But I hope, and I hope I'm wrong, because I've always been an Andre fan. But, uh, it's just not looking good for him. So, you know. Well, I we'll, see, we'll see how things go, but I just... I hope for the best with these fighters, but it's just like uh, Matt Room is fucking up, like with this shit, because these are these are talented fighters that are just being, you know, just spoiling on the vine, as as, yeah, as exactly. I was saying, as we would say, spoiling on the vine. And it's, I don't know what's going on as far as making deals, because it seemed like Hearn just made an offer like not too long ago from for the Cambosis fight, but. You know, from from uh, last year back after uh, Cambosis got the upset of her uh, Tiafimo, it seemed like the Haney fight, all that shit was all but made. Like, just the alley you. Yep. Well, I had heard, because I had heard that, like, they kind of, like, low key admitted it that, like, um, the WBO was basically about to enforce the um, the mandatory for with Lomachenko for um, Cambosis, and it's almost like they're trying to beat it to the punch because they're not going to let it go to the let it go to man like let it go to purse bids. So, and that's a fight I could see um, Aaron paying for, but it's like they keep saying, "Well, you know, um, we're getting lowballed by her," but like nobody's like saying like what the numbers are or anything like they're just posturing and unfortunately Lou DiBella is kind of known for this shit so I just don't know what's going to happen with that avenue but it's just it's ridiculous right whole lot of ducking going on yep so um it's just interesting because you know it's about you know people wonder well you know who deserves the fight more between you know Loma and Haney? Because I've heard both. I've heard people say both ways. Well, we want Haney we, because we need to just get um, 135 just undisputed. There's people that that think that they want to see Loma. Loma has a uh, a fair share of supporters that want to see him uh, fight Cambosis because they feel like all roads should lead through Loma Chanko, which I think is kind of silly. But yeah, like this this is the thing. <clears throat> Sorry. No one just want to admit, like, yo, what's the point of fighting Lomachenko when Cambosa just beat the guy who beat Lomachenko? Exactly. But it's like this whole narrative of trying to just freeze Haney out when I feel like Lomachenko should have went after Haney and cleared that up. Then you would have exactly. had whoever would have won that would have been the odd man out or the belts. It would it would have been like okay, he's the final piece. But this way you're like, yeah, Loma could get all the belts, but then it's like Haney belt still to the side. Exactly it's existing. And then they'll just be like, well, you know, email champ, <laughs> like in it's- franchise belt, like you know. And then and even in the promo, like they're already on some like 
like like like Loma's not even winning like he's winning all the belts yeah it's so it's, like, you it's, already see the game man like yeah we see the avenue they're going with this it's ridiculous I would laugh if Loma was to lose though like I'd be like you kidding me <laughs> yeah and and I'm hearing rumors of like it would be like a two like like Cambosis would have a rematch clause I think there'd be a rematch clause involved and it's like that's where I'm like, oh. You're take up a whole year with this bullshit. Exactly. Okay. One can Like, if you were to say, okay, Cambosis and Loma fight, and the winner fights Haney, and that's, like, agreed upon, like, okay, you know, I could I could stomach it. But two fights of this bullshit? No. Absolutely not. Right. Without no one committing to fighting Haney, like, the, the winner fighting Haney? Nah. Exactly. So and then it's like I mean Haney gotta chill for the whole year, or fight people where he know they're not too much of a threat. Once again, wasting this bad career. Absolutely. So, so you know, I'm saying this whole thing is ridiculous, and you know, I'm saying these guys need to be getting these fights. Uh, at this point, I'm just like I don't care anymore. I I want these guys. I don't want excuses. I just want these no, guys. Yeah, to get exactly. Both these make guys are fucking fights. Make the fight. Yeah. So, you know, but I think that's about it for today. I think we covered everything. I'm like so sleepy, tired right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, think, on my screen. I think that wraps up. Uh, first episode of Bodega Banter. Uh, We'll do final thoughts. Uh, LB, final thoughts? Oh, man, I'm hanging in there like American Chin, (laughs) y'all. I'm ready to go down. But, oh, man, that was a good first episode of that Bodega Banter. I mean, I feel like eating a pastrami on rye right now. Get that shit (laughs) up. You know I mean? So, um, so yeah, we're going to keep fucking with this format for a little bit. And, um, a shout out to everybody on, uh, you know, Podomatic and Anchor when y'all hear these later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, but, uh, if, you know, just make sure y'all subscribe to the Twitter and the YouTube so you get the updates and, uh, and, and, you know, make sure you fucking, um, Follow my man's uh, King P. You know, we all connected. Follow Shutterworth. Follow Conscious Pilot or Conscious Boxing. Like, we we all connected. It's the network. You know, Red Ring Gang is a label. I mean, we the artists. <laughs> so, you know, just look at it like that. So, there's more and more spin off, more shits coming this way. Um, you know, shout out to everybody else. You know, Gang Gang. Yeah, yes, sir. That's what it is. Yo, Pilot, any final thoughts? Yeah, man, yeah, man. It's blessed to be here. You know what it is. Ringing, ringing radio all day, every day, many times on Sunday. Uh, shouts out to everybody, ringing radio. And uh, obviously, Pat will be back soon. Uh, shout out to King P holding it down. Killed it with the Bodega Banter. Uh, but you know where to find us. Ringingradio.com. Ringing radio. Every platform imaginable. You know what it is, man. That's what it is, man. So, you know, I, I ain't really got much more to say than the other guys have said. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Ring Gang is Ring Gang is a movement. So, you know what I'm saying? We we we're, we're all connected. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like Wu Tang. We we the we the Ring Gang. We the we the boxing version of Wu Tang. You know what I'm saying? We got many many members that we drop a solo and kill it. So, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying? LB Pilot. Pat, Scorpio, Rome, PJ, the whole gang. Like, we all, we all family. We all, we all ring gang. Ring gang is one. We ain't gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So, that's all I got to say. You know, for myself, King P, Bodega P, LB, Shutterworth the God, and Conscious Pilot, the man, Pilot, Fly It. But, you know, it's being Box Bodega banter. You know what I'm saying? So, Thank you for sticking in. We got more on the way. All right? Easy.